might say this thing here represents the scientific achievement of reading someone's thoughts and feelings directly from their brain. We just got to the step right before it. The recent advancements we've made in using technology to read a person's emotions and intentions are astounding. To prove it, I am hiding this one scientific achievement among another two mostly made up scientific discoveries. Most of you will not be able to tell which one is the real one. And that's because they're all so incredible that they sound made up. This whole mind reading thing until a few decades ago walked the fine line between science and magic. For example, two of the papers I will tell you about are the scientific evolution of this one action that was used as a performance trick, which was kind of popular a few decades back among magicians and mentalists. And now, we do it for real, through really high tech. It's adjacent to telepathy, kinda. I'll explain more soon. Zener cards. There are these five cards, each with a different shape of a different color drawn on them. If I shuffle them and draw one card and you try to guess, you will have a 20% chance of guessing correctly. Congratulations! In the past there were some claims from scientific experiments on how some people would apparently be able to guess which card you drew with an accuracy that was way above 20%. And there were sophisticated hypotheses all over the place on the why and how, relating to the power to perceive one's intentions through brainwaves and signals. They were all flawed. Every single experiment was flawed. In some, the cards were not thick enough and you could see the shape drawn on the other side of them. Some other times the cards would be bent or marked or dented which would make them recognizable. In some cases though they could guess because the examiner had some small physical cues, small twitches, eye movements or breathing patterns that they adopted when they drew a specific card. We don't need to use small tricks like that anymore, we can actually tell what someone is looking at. Here's breakthrough number one. With a bunch of restrictions, again, we can guess what someone is looking at. You start with a set of given videos split into categories. Waterfalls, people's faces, rally cars driving around, and a bunch of others. The specific categories are not the point. Then you put a funny cap full of electrodes on your subject. You then observe their brainwaves while they watch each of the videos, subdivided by category. Then there's the magic component, an AI algorithm which takes as input the brainwaves of the person and the sets of videos that the person is watching. From there it learns. The following time, when the person is watching another video, the AI can generate the frame that the person is watching. And I don't mean that it just takes one random frame from one of the videos and points at it, no no no, it draws a brand new picture from scratch of what it thinks the person is looking at. And it works. Except for the blurness, of course. But I mean, that's how I see the world when I'm not wearing these. Would you call me useless and a waste of space because of that? Well, I would, but... If that's not telepathic enough, let's talk about sending messages from one person's brain to another person's brain without any other kind of interaction. The speed at which they were able to do it was, given the context, quite impressive. You have these two people. One is about to send a message to the other. On the sending side, a machine reads the sender's intentions, translates them into a message and sends them to the receiver, which with a clunky but extremely cool setup decodes the message. Starting from the sender, to send a specific word to the receiver, the scientists running the experiment would convert that word into a binary sequence. Just a bunch of ones and zeros. The specific don't really matter right now. The sender subject was then able to move a dot on a computer screen using their brain. They could move it either up or down by imagining to move their hand up or down. They wouldn't actually move their hand, they just imagine to flick their wrists up and down, but they wouldn't do it, otherwise it, it would be just a cheap, stupid motion sensing device that you could do with cheap electronics, okay? A special cap filled with electrodes would detect the intention to move as a change in the electrical activity of the motor cortex, which is the part of the brain responsible for executing and planning motion. 
The sender would transcribe the sequence of their message using the system. Move the circle up when you need to send a 1, move it down when you want to send a 0. After a while, the sender subject had a 90% accuracy at actuating their intentions using their willpower alone. The fully encoded message was then sent across the globe. The receiving part is fucking oh. sick. The receivers were blinded. Psych. I mean, they were blindfolded, sadly, because of ethics. Whenever a one from the incoming stream of bits was received, a special device would stimulate the receiver's visual cortex, the part of the brain that's responsible for eyesight. This would cause the receiver to see a phosphine, which is the phenomenon of seeing light without actually having any enter your eyes. It's similar to what happens when you rub your eyes a bit too much and a bit too hard, so for everyone in the sequence they would just see a blinking light even though they were blindfolded and had their eyes closed. Communication happened at 2 bits per second. Second, a bit being one of those zero or one digits. Regular human conversation, if optimized using the best encoding possible, sits at around 39 bits per second. I know it sounds slow, but keep in mind that this is a strange and kind of cool type of telepathy. We made someone's motor cortex communicate with someone else's visual cortex without involving any of the parts of the brain that are usually related to communication and language processing. But if you're not hyped up, maybe I should actually set myself on fire. And fun fact, this thing about our regular conversation going at around 39 bits per second seems to be true no matter what language you speak. Faster spoken languages like Spanish apparently convey less information per character than slower spoken languages like, say, Mandarin. It's called information density. Look it up. The concept of mentalists reading your muscle movements to read your brain is the kind of thing that sometimes skimmed the blurry line between reality and bullshit. So was it true? Apparently some people, like muscle reader Stuart Cumberland, could, while blindfolded, identify a specific object present in the room picked at random by one of the members of his audience. And he could allegedly guess by just holding the person's hand and listening to their muscle movements and heart rate changes while asking questions. But let's pause that for a moment. Moment. We have modernized this concept of detecting someone's physical intentions. Our third experiment concerns exactly this. In 2021, Stanford ran a proof-of-concept experiment that allowed a quadriplegic person, someone who's paralyzed from the neck down, to perform handwriting at a speed of 86 characters per minute, which falls within the average writing speed of a healthy adult with functioning limbs. They achieved this by sticking some electrodes inside of the patient's brain, and then they tried to read the brain signals that were generated every time the patient was trying to move their hands. They then used an AI trained on those signals to decode the scribbles that the patient was trying to draw with their hand that they couldn't move. And now look at how readable they are. The subjects could accurately write the characters they wanted with a 97% accuracy. And if they used autocorrect, the one that's on your smartphone when typing random bull in a group chat, they achieved greater than 99% accuracy. Now, I would argue that the ability to see other people's imagined motion and the ability to see what they're seeing are pretty telepathic skills. But the reason why I said that we kinda got to telepathy is because the original definition of the word has some huge flaws that you could spot even if you weren't an expert in brains, brain readings, brains. Telepathy was about the ability to communicate with someone to some extent no matter the distance using only your brain. No other external devices allowed. This very specific bit would violate our fundamental understanding of the universe. We have never found any kind of wave, vibration, signal that does not get weaker as the distance between the two interacting objects increases. Let's explain it with an example. Sound. The further away I get from this microphone, the more I need to raise my voice to make up for the loss of loudness. Dumbass. And this also happens for light, magnetism, gravitational attraction, uh, what else? Um, uh, vibration. It's just everywhere. A ridiculous example of telepathy was Lady Wonder, a horse that could read minds and talk and shit. Now, you might dismiss this story as the average story scam, and it sure was one, but there's something that makes it really special. She was obviously just a well-trained horse, and her owner would just m message her, so sign her to do things and spell sentences. The just f degenerate thing that makes her special is that 
the police consulted her to find leads in criminal cases. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Now, both aside, which one of the three achievements do you think was real? Well, first, each of these technologies raises some ethical concerns about the usage of such technologies. Right now, their main goal is to help disabled people. There is another tech I didn't tell you about, which can restore minimal eyesight by linking a digital camera to a person's optic nerve, the bridge between eyes and brain. But in the future, we might be able to use those things to spy on someone's thoughts. That's f***ing scary as hell! Imagine having no privacy, even in your own head. Corporations knowing what you're thinking, your every waking moment. Governments definitely need to pass some laws to prevent any of this from ever happening in the first place. We need to prevent this from becoming a thing. Anyways, they're all real. Every single breakthrough I described is 100% real. Provided I didn't misunderstand any of the details in any of the papers I read, which I probably did because I, I, I have brain damage. You can check for yourself though, the sources are down below. <sighs> for the love of God, the algorithm has been killing me. Just leave a comment saying stuff like, I eat naked and I'll reply and you'll reply and we'll start a conversation which, which, which will boost my videos and give me engagement uh, we will make me rich come on